I have faith that the Constitution will be saved as prophesied by Joseph Smith, but it will not be saved in Washington. It will be saved by citizens of this nation who love and cherish freedom. It will be saved by enlightened members of this church men and women who will subscribe to it and abide the principles of the Constitution. I revere the Constitution of the United States as a sacred document. To me, the words are akin to the revelations of God, for God has placed his stamp of approval on the Constitution of this land. I testify that the God of heaven sent some of his choicest spirits to lay the foundation of this government, and he has sent other choice spirits, even you who hear my words this day, to preserve it. We, the blessed beneficiaries, face difficult days in this beloved land, a land which is choice above all other lands. It may also cost us blood before we are through. It is my conviction, however, that when the Lord comes, the stars and stripes will be floating on the breeze over this people. May it be so. And may God give us the faith and the courage exhibited by those patriots who pledge their lives and fortunes that we might be free. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. My name is Travis Wayne Goodsell. Uh, today for President's Day in uh, February 18th, 2019, I'm finally hearing on the news that they're now admitting we are in a constitutional crisis. They're no longer speculating and having panel discussions about have we crossed that line? Are we there yet? Debating back and forth as to whether we're in a constitutional crisis. They are now saying today, we are in a constitutional crisis. And now it's too late. Mormons, 
you have had the Book of Mormon. You get up at fast and testimony meetings, expressing your love for the Book of Mormon, expressing your knowledge, as you suppose, of the truthfulness of the Book of Mormon. And you tell how you apply the Book of Mormon in your lives. So how did you let a king on the throne of the United States of America? You were deceived. Because as the quote from President Ezra Taft Benson said, how can you save the Constitution if you don't know it needs to be saving and in what manner it needs to be saved? let alone who is the danger that is destroying it. Shall we go over the Bill of Rights? advertisements. Ugh. Okay. First Amendment. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. Okay. Mormons get to have their religion. But no government, no court, no executive, no legislative must comply to the demands of the Mormon Church. Or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, as long as they don't violate the constitutional rights of others. Or bridging the freedom of speech, as long as it's not hate speech, as long as that speech does not violate the rights of others or the press, as long as the press are reporting the facts and the evidence, not wagging the dog, not fake news, not propaganda, or the right of the people to peaceable, peaceably to assemble. You can't block their path. and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. When your rights are violated, we need a prosecuting attorney to assist us. It's not just for defense. Second Amendment, a well-regulated militia. Where is it? It's gone. We don't have it anymore being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed in the militia. We have no militia. In 2008, the Supreme Court said this is for citizens' ownership of guns. They violated the Constitution. Citizen ownership of guns is in the Fourth Amendment. We'll get there. We need a militia. We do not need, we must not have, we are ordered not to have police departments, SWAT, FBI, CIA, ICE, Border Patrol, TSA, militia is what we're supposed to have. Third Amendment, no soldier shall in time of peace be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war. 
but in a manner to be scribed be prescribed by law unless the law violates this amendment it's that simple fourth amendment the right of the people to be secure in their persons houses papers and here it is effects that refers to guns and any other property you have it doesn't necessarily refer to housing property uh, it's your whatever property you get and is invented in the future for you to get against unreasonable searches and seizures why then are we having police patrolling our streets pulling people over searching and seizing and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized police need to get off our streets they need to go back into their police center and wait for us the people to call 911 for the militia not the police just like the fire department just like the EMTs they wait why won't the militia wait why don't we have a militia do you see how far we've strayed from the Constitution these are simple things but they've permeated our society and so as a result of this violation with police over militia we have this violation of the Fifth Amendment no person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime unless on a presentment or indictment of a grand jury except in cases arising in land or naval forces or in the militia when in actual service in time of war or public danger nor shall any person be subject for the same offense to be twice put in jeopardy of life or limb nor shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself nor be deprived of life liberty or property without due process of law how many people are able to pay to get out of jail how many people are forced to stay in jail until they plead guilty to a lesser charge the Sixth Amendment also is involved with the violation of the uh, previous Fourth Amendment and not having a militia instead of police Sixth Amendment in all all criminal prosecutions the accused shall enjoy the right this isn't an option this isn't something you can sign away by uh, extortion threats on a document you have the right to a speedy not months not years later speedy and public trial by an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed which district shall have been previously ascertained by law and to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation to be confronted with the witnesses against him you can't hide if you're going to narc on somebody <laughs> rat them out you have to say hey they committed a crime I'm making an accusation the state will provide a lawyer to prosecute the case First Amendment remember so if you truly are the victim you are to be defended in court and the accused also is given counsel for his defense as it says at the end here uh, to have compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in his favor 
as well. Seventh Amendment. In suits at common law, where the value in controversy shall exceed $20, the right of trial by jury shall be preserved. It cannot be waived to say, no, we want to go to a judge. We don't want a jury to decide our case. Businesses need to be going to court, not settled or mediated. They need to be held accountable if they violate the law, if they violate the rights of their employees, if they violate the rights of customers by poisoning them, by harming them. Eighth Amendment, excessive bail shall not be required. Yet, the majority of those that stay in jail are those who cannot afford it. Thus, it's excessive for them. Nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishments inflicted. Being poor and having to do time in jail without even having a trial is cruel and unusual punishment, by definition. Ninth Amendment, the enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. In other words, you cannot twist the Constitution to take away a person's rights. Tenth Amendment, the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution nor prohibited by it to the states are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. The people in Utah voted for medical marijuana and they voted for Medicaid expansion. Why is the state of Utah overturning both of those? And I won't go over the other uh, amendments and I won't go over the articles, but uh, I will go over these two things in the articles. In Article 4, Section 4, the United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a Republican form of government. What is a Republican form? What is the Republican form? Because apparently there are multiple forms of a Republican government. I'll give you three. One is a socialist republic. You may recall this from the USSR, Union of Soviet Socialist Republic, Socialist Republic. There's representative republic. It's where representatives are the leaders. This was similar to Rome, was a representative republic. So what are we supposed to have? It's the third option. Article 6. This Constitution and the laws of the United States which shall be made in pursuance thereof and all treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States shall be the supreme law of the land. A constitutional republic where the Constitution dictates the law, not representatives, not party government in a socialist republic. And the judges in every state shall be bound thereby. 
anything in the Constitution or laws of any state to the contrary, notwithstanding. Nobody can create a law that violates people's rights. And then senators and representatives before mentioned and members of the several state legislators and the executive and judicial officers, both of the United States and of the several states, shall be bound by oath or affirmation to support this constitution. And no religious tests. Yet we see it now. When people do advertising here in Utah to run for office, they have certain pictures in the background. They have certain objects in the background. They let you know of their religious test. You know what I'm talking about, Mormons. So what does it take? Notice, Benson said in the video, go back to it. You don't have to rewind, you just have to use the cursor to click on it. He said, it will not be the president of the church who will lead the elders of Israel to save the Constitution. He said, it will be guys like me. Members of the church who rise up to save it. That's what I'm doing. Nobody else is doing it. Certainly not Romney. Certainly none of our other officers in government. And certainly nobody in the church. We need to stand up and defend our nation against an enemy. Foreign and domestic. The domestic enemy has infiltrated the government and risen to power and have taken over, establishing a king on the throne. And finally they're acknowledging that it is done. That we are now in a constitutional crisis. Just as prophesied by Joseph Smith. Choose ye this day, Mormons, who ye will serve. Because Jesus directly said that the Constitution is his. Let me bring it up here. Yep. Section 101, verse 80. And for this purpose have I, Jesus Christ, established the constitution of this land. By the hands of wise men whom I raised up unto this very purpose, and redeemed the land by the shedding of blood. I find it hard to imagine that Mormons are traitors to the United States of America, to the promised land. I find it hard to believe that you would allow yourself to remain in bondage to those in government position. They've made it a crime to protest. They've silenced the civil rights movement. They gave them amendments 
but in reality nothing was done about it. Blacks are still slaves. Women are still oppressed. What good was the amendments if we weren't going to follow them? So ye elders of Israel, ye women of the church too, you too can stand up for this nation and the Constitution. All of us can stand united to save this nation. But you have to act on it. You can't just hold the seed of faith and hope in your hand, lock it away in a safe place, and go around telling everybody you believe and know it's true. You have to plant it with your actions. This is a call out for action. We must fulfill the prophecy to save this nation. That is the fruit of the seed. Don't lock the seed away. Because of the parable of the talents, the money, not the talent skills, it's referring to talent money. The guy who had just one talent buried it in the ground for safekeeping. Go back and read what Jesus did to that person, the master, the Lord, it was Jesus. He took it away from him. He banished him. So don't fall prey to that, Mormons. Don't fall prey to faith without works is eternal life. Faith without works is dead. You know that scripture. Don't go around telling people that you've read, pondered, and prayed, and you got a seed from the Holy Ghost but did nothing with it. It's time to rise up. It's time to defend this nation. No one else is going to do it. Those in the Democrat Party, they're taking advantage of the political movement. Even Trump declared a national emergency, then said there is no national emergency, then took off to Florida to play golf during his national emergency. All because he wants something to run on in his next presidential election. Remember, Trump shut down the government. Trump tortured American people, citizens. Those in the federal government who serve our country, which had ramifications down to us, to the poor and the needy, they suffered too. We do not want in our church a rising of Deseret Nation on Twitter who threaten Mormons to comply with prophets. That's the wrong direction. You need to be Mormons who represent Jesus, who will defend this nation this Constitution, not singling out a right here and there, whatever you want to choose from. You can't have religious rights over other rights, and you cannot deprive others of their rights 
by enforcing religious rights. It doesn't work that way. The Constitution, I've already read to you, says you can't do that. You can't have a rally protest or movement for one right. It's the whole Constitution or you gotta drop it. So, yeah, it's President's Day. Are we gonna give honor to our forefathers who fought, bled, and died so that we can have the freedoms that we could have had we been a righteous nation where there were no poor among us. It can happen. We have to change the economy, don't we? Because the economy is not working to help the poor. The economy is depriving people of their life, liberty, and property. Thus, it is a constitutional violation. They are committing crimes. Every business in this nation are committing crimes against the citizens. And they are not being held accountable because our government are changing the laws to protect them over the people. And I can go on and on, as you can tell, but we'll stop here. Rise up, Mormons. Awake and arise. Oh, God.